A very good day to you all, dear audience of the third TV Builds Forum at the Industry and Tallinn Baltic event. My name is Petri Kempinen, and it's my great pleasure to moderate the following roundtable on adaptation versus co-production, the Russian-Scandinavian case. A huge thank you goes to Roskina, who has made this discussion possible at the online program of TV Beats Forum. The background is that while there has been a number of adaptations of Scandinavian TV series in Russia, like The Bridge and The Killing, there is non-existence of co-productions between Russia and Scandinavian producers when it comes to the co-creating or even co-financing the content. Many Nordic series, however, do include Russian elements in the story, and we will hear about some of them today but they are, for the great part, shot in the nearby countries like Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia and Ukraine. So the question is, what are the causes, what are the reasons? Because, on the other hand, there is a wide range of themes and genres which could be interesting for the TV series audiences, not only in the Nordics, but also in Russia. What could these stories be? And here we get to the first question I'm going to ask our distinguished panelists. I will start by introducing them, but after that I want to know from each, each one of them something personal related to their perceptions. What do they think as the source of stories, what in their mind characterizes, characterizes Russia or Scandinavia, be it something in the literature, film, TV, lifestyle, whatever comes to your mind. I will start with Lars Plumgren. Welcome, Lars. Lars uh, was in September appointed to the coveted position of head of script editor Banijay EMEA. And Banijay is the largest non US independent group, which is home to more than 120 companies across 22 countries. His task is now to drive collaborations across the non English language footprint and to initiate co-productions between English-speaking markets and the group's labels in the Nordics, but also in Russia. And he is, of course, the producer of the original landmark show, The Bridge, which I believe now has been remade in nine versions. So, Lars, welcome. And what is, what is your mind? What is in your mind related to Russia? What characterizes Russia? <laughs> well, I love Russia. and. Uh... Thank you for inviting me and I mean, I think it's pretty amazing that we have so much in common. I mean, our histories are incredibly different. I mean, we haven't had a war for 200 years and the Russian people has gone through some horrible periods of time, but still somehow we share this like melancholic view on things. And I was brought up with Russian movies and books and music and, and Russia has got this special mood and mindset and it's it's like a combination of being extremely pragmatic on one side and then emotional and empathic on the other and I just uh, love it and um, one thing that characterizes well that's important for me that it, it's always been Russia has always been extremely high-end when it comes to the creative level and it's always on the forefront of storytelling so I mean I, I uh, remember reading Jingi Saitmato, this, I, I don't I guess the English title would be The Day Lasts Longer Than a Century. That was like, it's got nothing to do with me, but I was totally absorbed by it. And of course, all the classic cinemas, like everything from Nikita Mishalkov to, well, the totally unbearable Elin Klimov's, uh, Elin Klimov's Come See. I mean, it's a masterpiece, but and now in modern days, Leviathan or Bean Pole. And, and um, it's funny because another thing that creates our view on Russia, that's, that's um, things written about Russia by foreigners. And foreigners, like uh, now, I don't know if it's true, but it will still have an effect on how we look at Russia, like uh, Julian Barnes, uh, The Noise of Time, or Tom Rob Smith's Child 44. And, I truly believe there's stories to be told and they're relevant for both sides. And now it's just, we just have to build the relations stronger, I guess. Great. Thank you and welcome. Next online, we have Yulia Sumacheva, 
who is the CEO of WEIT Media, which is a Benice Group company. As I know, they are now a part of Benice. And uh, they are known as a producer of Most, the bridge, the Russian Estonian version that starts from Frenzy Bridge in Narva. And also, they are known for the remake of The Crime, Killing, or Pristuplenie, as you say it in Russian. I don't know if that went well. So, Julia, welcome. And what is, in your view, what is characteristic of Nordic countries in your eyes? <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's actually, you know, like, it's pleasant to be here. Thank you so much. So being, you know, like, as you, as you said, part of Bar right now, but also, you know, like being produced for many years in Russia, I actually, you know, like was looking at uh, most of the project and, you know, like I was looking for the third party project because we've done a lot of adaptation in Russia. And when I was looking at the Nordic stuff, I thought that we have something mutual inside, you know, so we have, you know, like from <laughs> one hand, there are a lot of characteristic features that actually, you know, like uh, putting us together. So from, you know, like from one hand, you know, like we are not very emotional, very, you know, like North people. And from the other hand, you know, like we have a lot of, you know, like secrets behind our lives. So that's why, you know, like we uh, actually, you know, like we met with Lars and we found out that we have so many, you know, like things inside us that are quite, you know, like common to both, you know, like cultures. So that's why we uh, created uh, a very popular uh, Russian version of the breach and also I'm always looking at the Nordic stuff and you know like I'm fond of different uh, series and I love you know like to do both adaptations and co-production and as, as Lars is saying that you know like um, right now you know the time not only for adaptation but for creation and for co-production so I think this is just the matter of uh, time, beliefs, and actually mutual interest. So that's why I think we have a wide range of opportunities right now. And I am very open, you know, like to work with you guys. Thank you, thank you. Next on the line, we have Matti Halonen, who is uh, one of the founders of Fisher King, a Helsinki-based <laughs> company. And they are probably most known of their local franchise, Border Town, or Sorionen, as it's called here in Finland. That was first broadcast in 2016. This series is now shooting the fourth season, and it was the first series out of Finland that was sold to Netflix. A year ago, Fisher King became part of the German production and distribution group Beta and their Nordic entity called Beta Nordic Studios. So, Matti, what is, what is characteristic of Russia in your eyes? Hi. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, I've been working 30 years in features. I've been working as well with co-production in Russia, in Russia and Finland, and also the Russian production that's been shot in Finland. We are sort of, as you know, all know that Finland is in the middle of Scandinavia and Russia. We used to be 600 years part of Sweden and 100 years part of Russia. Uh, I, all the Russians I met and work with are extremely warm and creative people, so it, it's really, really enjoyable to work with them. Uh, I don't know what to say, where the culture is so big and so great. They have made a huge, big films in their past when they used to produce more than 200 features per year. They have done nowadays a big TV series and so forth. I think it's very, very important and uh, interesting market to work with. Okay, thank you, thank you. And then we move on to Irina Sosnovaya. Uh, she's producer and showrunner at Yellow Black and Fight, which is actually one of the biggest independent studios based in Russia that focuses on the production of movies and TV programs. Most of them are shown on their online platform Start. They have a very versatile lineup, including drama called Diggers or Russian Affairs, which is a glamorous crime drama set amongst Moscow's oligarch-led high society, acquired by Amazon Prime and also by Walter Presents in the UK. Very recently, they won uh, the Best Performance Award at Cannes Series with their comedy drama 257 Reasons to Leave. And they have this summer shot Sherlock the Russian Chronicles that will soon air. So Irina, welcome. And what do you think? What is, what is typical of the Nordic countries in your eyes? 
Uh, first of all, thank you for this invitation. It's so nice to be with this amazing people. And uh, of course, thank you Toroskino for this massive contribution into promotion of uh, Russian production. Uh, you, know, you know, Scandinavia for me is of course uh, the best TV shows in Europe. Uh, the most stylish and the most uh, exciting. Actually, uh, let me just tell you one really personal story. Um, for, uh, four years, for, for the last four years, I was working uh, on one project which, uh, which was uh, released uh, just this year in September. Um, and actually, it's a drama ba based on real life events. Uh, it's uh, about investigation into Russian serial killer killed uh, 84 women and uh, I met him uh, for for the script and it was just uh, absolutely uh, amazing meeting and um, uh, he was one of uh, policemen who was working uh, on this case and he was like uh, trying to catch himself so it's it's really crazy story based on the uh, uh, real uh, events and uh, when we made it, it it became extremely extremely popular in Russia and uh, once I got the best compliment uh, I could get uh, my colleague said that it looks like a, a very Scandinavian noir show so it was uh, in, in my entire career it was the best compliment I ever get so this is what I think ab about uh, Scandinavian uh, TV shows. Great, thank you. And last but not certainly least, we have Peter Gustafsson uh, from Sweden again with a re rather recent appointment because after working as a producer in his own company Spark, he joined TV4 Media in Sweden as head of scripted for the Nordic and Baltic countries. And as we know, TV4 Media is now owned by Telia, one of the major telcos in the Nordics. As a producer, he is behind many films, including Khan Win Winner Border by Ali Abbasi. And in our context, the probably most relevant TV show he produced is The Moscow Noir. So welcome, Pyotr. And uh, well, what is your take on stories about Russia or Russia in general? Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to this uh, seminar, uh, roundtable discussions about co-productions between uh, our countries. Uh, uh, I find that uh, for me, the Baltic Sea has connected us for more than a thousand years and we've been traveling back and forth. We've been uh, sort of fighting each other in big wars, uh, but we also exchange cultures, I think. and. Being from the north, uh, sort of having, uh, being very close to nature, but also having to cope with darkness in the winter and very bright light in the summer, I think connects us much more than uh, a lot of other people around the world. But we also have other things, of course, like uh, the three isms that I say, which is like Lars said, melancholism, uh, alcoholism, <laughs> and also socialism uh, and i think those are all three very good uh, basics for storytelling so i really believe that there are a lot of opportunities and also doing the moscow noir series uh, we went to russia we went to moscow we did a lot of research and we really wanted to co-produce with russia but for different reasons it wasn't possible at that time and uh, this is a couple of years ago but uh, i think it's possible and i think we should really try because uh, there are more things that connect us and not and i also had the opportunity to be in the serial killer festival in in in, in, in the czech republic uh, earlier this year on the on the in the jury and uh, i think we had three or four Russian series. Uh, I think also the one about the serial killer that was a very, very good series. Yeah. So I, was, I've seen exactly three episodes. Yeah, I've seen three episodes. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. It was really, really good. Thank you. Great. So we already have some good opportunities. Now, I mean, enough for talking. I mean, I think we should uh, watch one trailer now before we let Lars and Lars <laughs> talk. So let's, let's uh, see the uh, trailer of The Bridge. Uh, and uh, talk about it a bit afterwards.
Så gør jeg noget, jeg lærer skrive Malmö. Københavns politi. Ved du, hvem hun er? Ja. Who are you? Marco Ruiz. Chihuahua State Police. Who are you? Sonia Cross. El Paso Homicide. Là, les roses bif. T'inquiète, ils parlent tous français maintenant. Bonjour. 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 Euh... Parlez-vous anglais Ah, oh, qu'est-ce que c'est Oh, c'est mon gars, ICD. Ah ouais ICD International Crimes Division. Bila ada kes melibatkan dua negara, dia orang panggil division aku. Oh, patut dia kat sini. Masuk-masuk terus ke sana. Singapore ICD. Masuk. Hello. Officer This Magat. woman Singaporean. Her name is Monica Lee, a public prosecutor. This case belongs to Singapore ICD, so you and your men can leave. Ich hab Angst. Angst um unsere Werte. Unser Land, unseren Boden, unsere Kinder. That was a, that was just a really short clip from the Russian version, but I must say I'm I'm really proud of it and I really like the process at all uh, all the way through. I mean, for me, we had this fantastic advantage of having someone to trust in Russia and Julia and Maria and the rest of the guys at Fight Media. They they constantly track our stories from all across the group and and they when they came up with the this idea, I was just all for it and we. We start, you know, we had this, um, we had a really good like dialogue from the start. So, what other country will the Russian police be the woman or the man or and um, the the tonality, the format, the wall and and um, it was a good process. And I could just step back and follow this as a fly on the wall. So, Julia will have to tell you more about this, uh, about the actual process. But I, I'd like to come back on this with trust again because. Russia is in many ways far away, and, and the challenge in all co-productions is you have to accept that you will lose control. And and I think that for all of you, and, and for me as well, if we, if we work in other constellations, it's you have to we have to work on building this trust with 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 you and the co-production co partners when we finally succeed. So so well, that's basically my stop. But I, Julia, I think maybe you can tell us more about the. But the actual production, how it was from your perspective. <laughs> it's actually, it was uh, very interesting, you know, like uh, when we, as you remember, when we firstly talk, you know, like Lars, so you, you told, you asked me, you know, like what will be the other country, you know, like you, you're looking for, you know, like where the body will be, you know, and I was like, Let's discuss, you know, so at first it was like, you know, like Ukraine, but in that time we had, we had a very, you know, like hard time, you know, like um, uh, from the political perspective and actually, you know, like we, we actually, we were thinking, you know, like what will be the next step, you know, like to have uh, the characters from both sides and then, you know, like uh, Kazakhstan and then, you know, like we found Estonia where it's actually, you know, like there is a real bridge. But mainly, you know, like the story itself, you know, like it's fantastic. And um, from, you know, like from my perspective, when I uh, watched the original one and uh, the and I read the script, I told Lars that it's totally fantastic. And, and I see it as a, a local Russian story that could happen, you know, like any time. So that is why, you know, like it was very easy to work, you know, like it was very easy to adapt. And, uh, you know, like, um, it had a very great feeling. And at the end, you know, like, uh, from, from one thing, you know, like, it has to have a different mentality. And we found, you know, like, Estonian uh, 
policemen, as we are saying, like because we have a lot of you know like um, uh, good Russian attitude about Estonian and you know like an Estonian is about Russian. So that's why you know like it was an interesting experience to adapt the series and to shoot because we are working both actually in Estonia and Russia. So it was interesting, you know, like interesting case. So unfortunately, in that time. And we couldn't have uh, opportunity to have a co-production, but we just, you know, like we sold the um, uh, original Russian version to Estonia. So, and uh, we had, you know, like brilliant uh, ratings uh, there and in Russia as well. May I ask you, I mean, Julia, maybe one thing at this point, that is it, is it now easier to co-finance or co-produce than it was back in the day when you did uh, the uh, the bridge of the most, I mean, the version between Estonia and Russia? I think actually it depends on the project right now, because uh, when we were starting uh, adaptation, so uh, we were thinking about networks who, who can support us. Right now, I think the situation is changing because of the streamers and actually, you know, like because of the uh, projects that are being, you know, like uh, internationally uh, viewed, but, you know, like by, by different people. So it not necessarily means that we need to have, you know, like uh, uh, one project and it will be only seen in Russia or in Nordics. So right now, you know, like any idea could be, you know, like dubbed in any language and could be co-produced and could be, you know, like uh, quite uh, famous, you know, like in all the countries. So I think, you know, like right now we have a better situation with the co-production. We just need to find a good idea that will be, you know, like interesting for everybody. Good, good to hear. Um... Let's uh, let's see another trailer because I wanted to bring in Matti Halonen from Finland and uh, there is a trailer of Border Town and we could watch it now and then uh, Matti could maybe talk about why actually uh, he didn't choose to shoot the Russian part in Russia. Sorjosen muista tilaisuuteen. Mitä sä teet täällä? Tutki rikosta. Minusta se ei ole hyvä olla täällä nyt. Missä muun pitäisi olla? Mikä saisi sinut tekemään rikoksen? Sellainen asia varmasti on olemassa. So uh, 
about the Border Town, that third season trailer, uh, we are shooting at this. At the, the, uh, actually, the, we are not shooting the fourth season. We are shooting a feature film based on the same concept. And we have, uh, I think, six days to go, and then we are done. So uh, what happened with the whole uh, whole arc is that we, when we started to putting things together, uh, 2014, 2015, we were in dialogue with the Russian broadcasters, if they would come along. And things went forward, but at the end of the day, they, they uh, didn't come. And at that point, we figured out that uh, there is no incentive in Russia, and we didn't have any other sources where to get money. So we ended up to shoot, actually, the, the half of the first season, we shot it in Lithuania, even though the whole, whole concept is set in the border of Russia and Finland, in a small town called Lappenranta. Uh, the second season, uh, the, there were some small part of the show were set in the Russia, and we ended up to shoot that, uh, I think, four or five days in, in Tallinn, in, in Estonia. And on the third one, uh, we didn't we shot everything in Finland. So basically, there were no need when we ended up to, 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 the, uh, uh, to shoot the first season in Lithuania. There were no need to go to the Russia at that time. Uh, most probably, I would make <coughs> a bit different uh, decision today because I know for sure that there is an incentive that works. At least it should work. I don't know. I, I, I have no experience how it works, but it's, it should cover the whole Russia. And there is an, an, an what I heard there is a uh, good uh, space for the core productions. So basically, that's that was the whole story of Border Town. Yeah, you, so you didn't actually, you would have had a need, but then again, I mean, you could also play the uh, different different parts of uh, that were representing Russia in Lithuania and later on in Estonia. So actually, you could do that. Yes, we actually did a lot of uh, filming in this, uh, Lithuania that was set in Lappeenranta in Finland. Because of, of they have an incentive, and yeah. half of the crew half of the crew came from there, so it was a it was a pure decision based on the financing facts, which and makes sense was, of course. Was, yeah, that was the only reason to put the, everything together, and then we managed to grow the budget up on the second and the third third season. So on the third season. We had um, maybe uh, sixty percent more more financing in place. We were yeah. able to shoot everything in Finland, basically with the Finnish crew, a couple of Lit Lithuanian uh, technicians as well. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to Irina now, and uh, we will watch uh, a trailer of A Good Man, which is the new psychological thriller, and uh, take it from there. After that. Вы пытались долгое время закрыть глаза на очевидное. Откройте мне их. Есть факты исчезновения женщин разного возраста, но это всегда сексуально активный возраст. Нет детей и нет старых. И что? А вы не понимаете? Он очищает мир от скверны. Я хочу, чтобы ты поняла правду о самой себе. Главное, зло делать это с закрытыми дверями. Мама плохо себя вела. Маму пришлось наказать. Там еще пять трупов. Беги, сука. Мы бы знаем, что зло должно быть наказано. Поняла, кажется, кто я. Я зло. That looks great. So, am I right that this was something that you actually proposed to have as a co-production? 
Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, we proposed it, and but unfortunately, we couldn't find partners yet, um, and we did it by ourselves. So uh, it, it became really successful in Russia, and uh, now we're negotiating this project with uh, uh, with some international partners to to be bought as a ready-made, and actually. Uh, we already managed to have uh, our shows on uh, Netflix and Amazon as uh, originals. So it was like, um, I think uh, we were the first Russian company to work with this major streamers, the streamers in, and uh, be, uh, be on, on this uh, as original and exclusive. But we didn't manage to have any co-production yet, unfortunately. But of course, we are hoping to change the situation. And... Um, uh, I think now Russia uh, uh, situation in, in Russia is changing because we have a boom in streamers and uh, that gives uh, massive opportunities for Copro because uh, now everyone try to hunt for uh, try trying to hunt for the high end stories that uh, will help to stand alone and which will um, which will means markets and players are even more open for the new co-productions uh, than uh, usually during the um, era of uh, liner uh, viewing. Um, according to our co-production strategy, we would, like, we would like to co-produce internationally and we are open to ideas, but they need to have some Russian footprint, uh, Russian flavor. flavor. Uh, it could be the cast, setting, script, uh, anything. We are open for, for any type of uh, co-production. And, uh, of course, uh, this should uh, commence from the early stages of development to be like uh, stories from the scratch, as it's called. Great. What about, I mean, can you explain a bit more about the uh, Russian tax incentive and also because I've understood that uh, some of the uh, platforms, the OTT platforms are also investing into co-productions. So, I mean, how does this work? I mean, how do you get the tax incentive from Russia, for example, as a production company from the Nordic countries or do you have to have a co-producer involved? Um, it's usually in the early stages we are like uh, offering a script and uh, we are offering to, to different partners and of course uh, uh, we're looking for partners uh, in order to, to share a budget. And uh, of course we, we offer uh, the best possibilities for screening in, uh, for, for filming in Russia because uh, we are quite... Uh, experienced uh, production company and we can arrange every every possible things in Russia, the best talents and uh, um, in comparison to to US and uh, UK, it's not overpriced uh, mm. to, to film in Russia. Uh, in the early stages, we, we would like to find a partner and uh, to maybe uh, to make some <clears throat> um, to make to work on script together and then to finance uh, production together and then of course to share all rights for the um, yeah. for the final uh, show. Yeah. So I understood the question that was about it's... taxes. Sorry. Yeah. So sorry to interrupt. The the question was about taxes as well. So there are you know like some regions that are giving you know like taxes you know like rebounds. So if you are going you know like to shoot in in couple of territories, so definitely you have you know like uh, uh, sums back from the production budget that you are spending on the specific territories and areas. So. That that is why, you know, like also, you know, like uh, the uh, production uh, sums could be returned back, you know, like to uh, to the production companies that are spent, you know, like on some of the regions as well. There are some areas Great. in Russia, like uh, like Kalgrad, for example, which uh, where you can get this uh, taxes back. So there are some special uh, areas in Russia which uh, give give you this possibility. This is good to know, and also that the fact that there is possible to get uh, pre-buys or pre-sales from the uh, from the platforms, which is a new thing at the moment. So that is a good one. Uh, thank you, and uh, let's move on to Piotr. 
now and uh, we are going to watch the uh, trailer of Moscow Noir and then he will talk about the experience. I've been putting together a deal that I think could be a game changer. So you think you can come here and tell Russians how to conduct our business? How about business? You are at the heart of something. I need you to help me to find out what. I'm a banker, you know? I'm not a fucking secret agent. Om vi ses igen, kan du inte berätta alla dina hemligheter för mig. Uh, I mean, this series uh, was based on uh, a book, or a, actually a series of books, but we we produced the first season based on the first book, and the book's title was The Conductor of St. Petersburg. We called the series Moscow Noir, and as the title uh, suggests, it takes place in Moscow. Uh, most of the action are in Moscow. It's based on a uh, Swedish. Uh, uh, it's 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 based on a real story. Uh, a Swedish banker, who then became uh, the author of the books uh, ten years later, and so we had all the sort of intentions and possibilities to shoot it in Russia, uh, but because of uh, 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 the challenge to find a broadcaster or a, uh, or financial uh, uh, incentives and financing in general from Russia, uh, we had to change our plans and uh, eventually we ended up shooting in Lithuania uh, where we could find uh, reliable and predictable uh, support systems, but also uh, the talent that we needed. And luckily we could find most of our Russian speaking talents in in the region because uh, a lot of their actors uh, uh, actually also work in Russia. So so they, they could speak fluently both English and Russian, which was a big advantage for us. So at the end of the day, we, we did manage to uh, to make uh, Vilnius look like uh, Moscow, 1999. And uh, we only spent three days in Moscow shooting plates. But apart from that, we did everything in Lithuania and mostly in Vilnius, uh, uh, but also in some other spots in Lithuania. Uh, but of course, if, if we would have had better co-production possibilities, then uh, we set up uh, the co-production in uh, 2017, we shot it 2018, and it was aired 2019. So, so I mean, we had the intention to co-produce with Russia, but uh, uh, because of these reasons uh, that I mentioned, we couldn't do it. But the intention was to shoot there and collaborate with Russian talents and Russian producers. This is this is very clear and good to know. And of course, times are different maybe now. But I mean, uh, from you, I mean, Piotr, I would like to ask because you are at the moment working for TV4 Media, which is, which is, I mean, a broadcaster, but also a platform that uh, operates in the Nordic countries and will operate later on also in the Baltic countries. So, what are your thoughts? I mean, are Russian or Russian co-produced shows interesting for? Seymour and TV4 in the future, in terms of distribution. I mean, obviously, the Moscow Noir was a series that we, uh, where TV4 and Seymour were the main uh, commissioners. So, uh, if it has uh, Swedish or Finnish or Norwegian or Danish element, uh, it's possible, yes. And in the future, obviously, also if it has a Baltic element, it it will be possible, but but today the majority of financing for uh, the Seymour series comes from either Sweden or Finland, so it would either have to uh, fit the Finnish uh, market or the Swedish market. 
But I mean, the more countries it will work in, the better it is, of course. Thank you, Piotr. And then actually I would ask the same question from Irina, who also has an access to one of the platforms, which is called START in Russia. So uh, what about START? I mean, would you would that uh, platform be a possibility for Nordic or co-produced shows to be aired? Uh, of course, yes, because uh, actually we're trying to uh, think about us we, we, we like to think about less like a, a platform for the best dramas. And um, actually recently we uh, cooperated with uh, Walter Presents. It's a uh, um, British uh, uh, platform which is show we, which is uh, choosing the best dramas all over the world. So now uh, we see start as a home of best drama internationally. So of course, uh, uh, the best uh, project from Scandinavian colleagues is absolutely, um, absolutely uh, great for for the start, and we we see a lot of uh, opportunities in this area. And you already mentioned that you would like to work uh, from the scratch, early days. I mean, to get the project presented very early on in order to build the collaboration. So that was very clear. But I would like to ask the same question from Julia. That I mean, how do you prefer? I mean, what 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 is the right face to approach you if you are a producer from a Scandinavian country? What do you want to know and where? It's actually, you know, like uh, we we can discuss any ideas on the on the base, you know, like line or you know, like if uh, other producers has something already written. So it's always, you know, like good to have, good to read. So we are often discussing with Lars, you know, like what other topics that could be interested for, you know, like for different regions, for for example, Russia and Scandinavians, and you know, like in different ones. And we are usually, you know, like uh, trying to think that we have a lot of common inside. So. For me, you know, like uh, the uh, written idea be, you know, like uh, could any could be any small, you know, like synopsis also from the scratch, or it could be, you know, like uh, already developed stuff. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it should be something, you know, like uh, hugely written. So we could work together on, you know, like on any. Uh, uh, any project that we have. So for now, you know, like everything depends on the content. This is, you know, like the the way how, how I'm approaching the business, you know. So so that's why, you know, like you know, like a better concept will definitely win. Doesn't necessarily mean that it should be a Russian concept or Scandinavian or Danish or Finnish. It could be, you know, like both ways. So you know, like we are ready for any ideas, and I will be glad to share with you guys as well anything that I have. This has been great. I mean, we are soon running out of time, unfortunately, even though we, I feel that we barely have started this discussion. And it's, of course, it's a bit complicated with these online sessions. But, but I mean, just to wrap up, I mean, I could ask Matti and Lars, because you have been most silent here. Maybe you could, uh, each of you mentioned uh, what would be your dream project between Scandinavia and Russia. So Matti, you go first. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks. Uh, I forgot to mention that I produced, uh, first our company, we produced a TV series called News, based on Asian uh, Greek mythology, News and Stutters, fantasy series. And it was a Russian Volga film who took it, we were able to refinance it, and they were uh, distributing that, uh, broadcasted that in uh, Russian TV channel called Namashka. And it was really, really great. So, uh, yeah, it was a totally fantasy series set in Finland. Very weird setup. And, and so everything is possible, I would say. And Lars, do you have a dream? <laughs> well, I, I guess I have to shoot from the hip at this moment. But I think, I mean, we talk a lot about truth right now, and especially with Trump kind of bending it all the time. And I would, of course, love that we had this Russian submarine hitting a rock in the southern part of Sweden like 30 years ago and I would love to be able to tell that story in a perfectly true way <laughs> because there's so many there's so many interpretations of what actually happened like everything from the 
the crew being drunk or the other ones they being super spies. So uh, that would be a true story from that era would be lovely. Great. Well, I mean, I have to close now because we are over time, but I mean, I feel that there is a closeness and also the economic possibilities are better than before. So uh, let's think of this as a start of a beautiful friendship. Thank you to the dear panelists and thank you to Roskino and uh, let's go on with our good work. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.